Hey guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana. Today's topic came out of nowhere. Last night, one of the hobby's worst kept secrets is that PSA is going to start grading the 1984 star number 101 Michael Jordan XRC. Um, this is a super spur of the moment video. I'm trying to knock it out today before I start my, uh, my work day in the world of real estate. Really the purpose of this video is I want to elicit thoughts and comments from the viewers of this video to get your thoughts on what this is going to do to the value of, you know, super high end BGS 1984 star number 101s. Are people going to start trying to cross those over to PSA? What about lower grade star 101 cards? Are they going to try to cross those to PSA? What about the 86 Fleer? Is this uh, going to have a deleterious or a negative effect on the 1986 Fleer in PSA 10 condition? Is it going to have an effect on the 1986 Fleer in 7 and 8 condition? Uh, what, what do you guys think? I want to know what you think. I personally think these cards have existed for so long that their paths are no longer uh, directly proportionate. In other words, uh, I think this will cause a, a short-term explosion in the value of the 1984 star number 101 card raw or in BGS condition because I think there will be people out there that are ballsy enough to try to cross this card over. Um, but I don't necessarily think this is going to have a negative effect on the 1986 Fleer card. I think those cards have existed and subsisted for long enough that they're now independent, you know, they're independent of each other. If anything, I think a, a rise in one may cause a rise in the other, as we've seen in the past. I've got card ladder pulled up. I just really want to get your thoughts. I want you guys to comment and let me know what you think. I was having a, uh, a discussion this morning in a group chat with a bunch of very high-end Jordan collectors. I'm a peon amongst these guys, uh, especially when it comes to Jordan knowledge and historical uh, knowledge of Jordan cards, specifically even these two cards. Uh, and again, I'm not super biased. As you guys know, I don't have a star, but I do have an 86 Fleer. But I'm curious, just thinking forward, thinking through the macroeconomics of it, the supply and demand existence of it, uh, what the situation is going to be going forward. I've got card ladder kind of pulled up. This is just showing you. Uh, you know, this is obviously the card we're talking about, the 19, uh, 1984 star number 101. We know in BGS 9.5, it's a pop three, right? So there's only three of those in the world. You're not going to find any data. Those haven't sold in forever. We don't know what the card's worth. I think a lot of people think Card Ladder has a predicted value of $684,000. I think a lot of educated people think that if this card showed up, uh, it would probably push the $1 million mark. The question is, what's a PSA 9 going to be worth, right? Because at some point, there's going to be one PSA 9. And if I'm the owner of the one PSA 9, i probably sell that thing as soon as humanly possible as a pop one card. Uh, I think that that card will fetch an incredibly high number. And then I think that as more of them are graded by PSA, I think it will uh, come back to earth. Just like everything that spikes early, it's almost like a new Panini product release, right? The first ones that come out are worth, you know, 100%. And after four weeks, the card's now worth 20%. Same card, same player, same condition. It's just new is better. Pop one is better than pop four, then pop 12, then pop 60, whatever. I don't know how PSA is going to tackle this. Obviously, one of the big issues is going to be, you know, one of the big issues is going to be how does PSA uh, grade these cards? Uh, do they employ their alleged, oh, uh, we don't pop control, but do they really pop control? Wouldn't it be in PSA's best interest to severely limit the number of PSA 9s they give out? Uh, will they even give a PSA 10? Is it in their best interest to give out a PSA 10 e even if the uh, even if the condition meets the necessary criteria for a PSA 10? I don't know. Uh, these are all sorts of questions. Let me know in the comments your thoughts about about how this affects the value of the 84 star BGS, you know, 8.5 that exists right now. Uh, this is kind of, I've got these indexes pulled up on your screen here. You're looking at the, uh, the two year historical index for the PSA 10, which is pop 318 and the BGS nine, which is pop 72. Uh, you know, it's just, just kind of give you an idea of what these cards have done over the last two years. If you're an owner of either one of these cards, you're doing just fine, right? Um, up 172% for the Fleer PSA 10, despite the fact that over the last year, the card is down 24%. The star has been running over the past year up 45%. So now they're kind of inversely proportionate. The Fleer is on the way down. The star is on the way up. This news last night is certainly going to increase the value of the star cards in BGS 8.5 condition. I don't think there's any question about that. 
any news is good news in this hobby. And so there's going to be a lot of talk about people scooping up BGSs, hoping to cross them over to PSA. Uh, but, but one thing that I pointed out that you guys may or may not agree with, what I think is going to happen is I think the pop of the 19th, obviously the print run is what it is for 86 Fleer and for Star, right? There's not going to be any more or less printed. That happened, you know, almost 40 years ago now, believe it or not. Uh, so I don't think the, the, the print run we know is not going to change. But what might change is the outward appearance of the pop report because I think what a lot of people will do, and these are gamblers, this is not me. If I had a BGS 9 or BGS 8.5 star card, I don't think I'm cracking and submitting that to PSA. There's too much risk. What if it comes back men's size, which PSA is notorious for uh, sending cards back men's size. I got a PSA order last night. A couple of them came back men's size. They wouldn't grade it. Uh, could you imagine cracking, you know, a, a BGS nine worth? Uh, what are we looking at? You know, seventy five, one hundred and nine thousand dollars, and submit it to PSA and getting back a men's size grade. Now you have a raw star card uh, that's not in a slab BGS or PSA. Can you imagine taking that type of risk? There may be people out there that are willing to do that. I'm not one of them. I'd keep my BGS eight point five in the case exactly where it is in my vault and not touch it. That's just me. But I know there are some huge risk takers out there. So that's question number one is, uh, you know, in the comments, let me know, would you crack an eight? Would you crack a 7.5, an eight, an 8.5 and submit it to PSA? Or would you try to cross it over? I don't even know if crossovers are open with PSA uh, anymore. I know for a while they shut that down. Is that back open? I don't know. I probably should know that. But like I said, I'm, I've never, you know, I've only crossed over maybe a couple times in my entire life. So I'm no expert on that topic. Um, but what I think is going to happen is I think the pop report, uh, for the star card is actually going to increase and it's going to increase for a couple of reasons. I think number one, anything and everything that's out there that's raw, those people are going to submit it and they're probably going to submit it to PSA because there's almost, almost no pop report. We know PSA graded them a little bit in 1991 and then they killed it, right? But there are a couple of PSA out there. So people are going to want to get those cards graded by PSA and there's some people that just like PSA, right? So they're going to want their card in a PSA slab, especially this particular card because of the color match with the PSA label, that's going to be a really big thing so if you got the kind of funky bgs 8 or lower you know bgs label a lot of those people even in a psa 7 would rather the star card because it looks better and then there's just people out there that are just loyal to and adhere to psa as the you know the sole slab for their collection so the psa pop report's going to go up but let me ask you this how many of the people who actually crack a bgs star card and submit it to PSA are going to let BGS know that they need to remove one from the Beckett pop report. My estimation, it's going to be very few. I don't think many people do that. I don't think many people care about that. I don't know if there's a moral obligation to do that or what. Uh, so what you're going to see is the BGS population, let's say for instance, somebody cracks a BGS 8.5 and submits it to PSA and gets a PSA 8. Well, you went from having one BGS 8.5 in the pop report to now you've got a BGS 8.5 and a PSA 8. So you're going to see the total number of star cards that appear in those two pop reports go up. The same can be said for SGC, although I've not seen, I don't think I've ever seen an SGC star card. I don't think SGC grades them. Um, but those, those BGS graded uh, are not going to go down, but the PSA is going to go up. So I think it's going to have a, a negative effect on the appearance, at least, right, in principle, of the pop report. The same way that the 1986 Fleer PSA pop report doesn't reflect crack and resubs either, right? Sometimes... You know, people will report to PSA and send in the old label and say, take this out of the pop report. But I bet you, I mean, I don't know, you tell me, 95% of the people do not report to PSA that they have cracked a PSA 9 and submitted it to get it regraded for, for various reasons. And so I think that the pop report for PSA 9s, 8s, 7s, 6s, and 5s of the 1986 FLIR card are also drastically over estimates. Uh, I think there are fewer than what is reflected. Um, those are just a couple of my thoughts on this matter, but what I really want to know is a year from now, well, we know what's going to happen in the next three months. Star is going to go nuts. I I'm just telling you, it's going to happen. All of these star number 101 cards are going to go bananas. Even the non-XRC uh, Jordan star cards, and I think there's 25 of them, those are going to go bananas as well. They just are. Um, but but are you, uh, are you uh, thinking in a year from now, three years from now, five years from now, uh, the value of the star card goes up in both PSA and BGS? Does it go up in PSA and down in BGS? Um, because of the new uh, you know, hobby love for PSA uh, slab cards, 
does this negatively affect the value of a BGS graded star card? In other words, are people going to focus their attention on stars in PSA slabs and, and lose interest in the demand for the, for the star in the BGS slabs goes down? I don't know. In three months, six months, one year, three years, I don't know the answer to that question. I'm curious to get what you guys think because there was not a consensus in our Jordan group about how this affects the value of the star card long term in each grade, right? Uh, and then the next question is, because the star card in PSA slabs necessarily is, it is going to go up. I don't think there's any really much argument about that. That's going to go up. Um, you know, what effect does that have on the 1986 Fleer, PSA 10? What about PSA 7 and PSA 8, which are more like commodity cards, right? I know they're big cards. It's the most highly, you know, demanded card probably in all of sports cards. Um, you know, but what effect does, does PSA grading 1984 star 101 have on the 86 Fleer PSA in various grades? I don't know the answer to that question. I, I personally, if you made me guess, I don't think it necessarily has an inversely negative effect, you know, on the 86 Fleer PSA 10 because nothing has changed. There are still 318 of them out there. I think we're almost 40 years removed, 38 years, wait, is that right? Yeah, 38 years removed from the 1984 Star 101. By this time, I don't think people are, are buying one or the other. I think both people recognize, and I did a, an Explore the Card episode, I think it's episode number 25, I can't remember. Uh, go check out uh, my playlist for Explore the Card. I did an episode on The True Rookie Card where we did an in-depth uh, deep dive into the 1984 Star, Star 101 card. Uh, I think we're almost 38, we're 38 years removed from when that 84 star was released. I think by now, uh, you know, at least for me, and I think I speak for most collectors, you don't have to choose, right? You don't have to, I mean, yes, we like to argue about it. It's like Jordan versus LeBron or whatever, but you don't have to choose one or the other. I think most people who are very high-end Jordan collectors and, and these cards are both high-end cards in high grade, I think both pe uh, most people would want both cards in their collection. Uh, so I, I don't necessarily think a rise in one will result in a drop in the other. I don't think it works that way. If anything, uh, some of the guys in my group chat were discussing the fact that, you know, a rise in the 1984 star card in PSA condition might result in an increase in the 1986 Fleer card in high grade PSA slabs because people like to pair cards together. I've done episodes before telling you guys how much people like to pair cards and post pictures, right? How many people would like to post a PSA 9 next to a, a PSA 9 star card versus a PSA 10 86 Fleer and say, here you go. I've got them both, right? These are my cards. Even in PSA 7 condition for both cards. How many people out there would like to post those together and say, check box A, check box B, right? I got it covered. Uh, so a rise in the star might also result in a rise in the 86 Fleer. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. I'm not a macro economist or any type of economist. Uh, I hated ec uh, economics in, in college for sure. Uh, I was a finance major, but uh, I am intrigued uh, to get your thoughts. And really, that's the purpose of this video. I want you guys to tell me what you think. Um, I want you guys to tell me what you think about what this announcement last night by PSA, and again, we've known about this for months. Um, and I've, I've actually got a mutual friend of Steve Taft, and so this was not a secret. We knew this was gonna happen. Uh, what effect will this have on the short-term value of 84 Star 101 in BGS Labs? And what effect will it have on uh, the long-term future of 84 Star number 101 in BGS Labs? And then the same two questions as it pertains to 86 Fleer, number 57. I don't think this changes anybody's perception or opinion on uh, which one is the true rookie card, right? Just because PSA grades it doesn't mean it becomes magically the true rookie card. Wherever you stood on that side of the fence, that this doesn't change that. Um, but what it will change is supply and demand. And... Um, and like I said, I think a lot of people need to be very careful because I think it's going to increase the at least uh, cursory perception of the population of the 84 star number 101 because you'll have old cracked BGS ones that show up as existing and then you'll have newly slab PSA ones. And when you add that together, one just became two. And when you do that a hundred times, which is 
I think a very safe estimate uh, there's an extra hundred in your pop report amongst the two companies right there so if anything I think this is going to have a negative effect on the, at least the perceived supply of the uh, 1984 star 101 card again print runs are something separate there's a zillion 86 Fleer and there's a you know a much smaller quantity print run of 84 star 101 that's not changing and so honestly from my perspective not much has changed other than the fact that if you prefer the card in a PSA slab, then go get the card in a PSA slab. And if you don't care, then you'll leave it in your BGS slab. And if you're one of those wild gamblers out there, you're going to go uh, gamble and, and, and take a chance on this card and crack a BGS 8.5 and try to get it into a PSA slab. And, and good luck to you. Hopefully you don't get a men's size uh, grade and get your card sent back to you in a card saver. So uh, those are just my thoughts. But really, the purpose of this video is the news is out there. I want to know what you guys think. I want you guys to comment below. Please comment below. If you have any Jordan knowledge, let me know what you think. Uh, this announcement by PSA, this official announcement by PSA last night or in the last 36 hours will have on uh, basically the future of both of these cards in various grades, in various grading company slabs. Uh, that's it. Uh, hopefully you guys have a great 4th of July weekend. Uh, I'm going to release this video right away, so you'll get it Friday morning. Hit the bell icon if you want to watch another Explore the Card episode coming out today at 5 p.m. I've got videos coming out, you know, usually every day, every other day, something like that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider it. Uh, I don't do many of these current state of affairs in the hobby type videos, but this is one I had to put out there as a Jordan collector. And uh, so just curious. Let me see. Uh, let me see what you guys think. And I always appreciate uh, the views and I appreciate the comments. Thanks. Uh, keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby. And peace.